Do you all remember when they used to tell us that you get what you pay for? Is that still true today? Let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Andrea. Welcome to my channel or welcome back and thank you for joining me in the babe cave and yes that's my signature thing and do I think I'm a babe? Eh. <laughs> it's just a fun way to have a little something that's a piece for me. Something that I came up with that I wanted to be unique in. So there you have it. <laughs> so the topic for today do you get what you pay for today? And that's where I'm going to dive into some topics. And I'm going to put this out here and I'm going to ask you some questions. I want you to answer them. I, I want my audience to engage in the comments of what you think and what you feel and what you do. <laughs> so this is a interactive video to get your comments down below. I have loved handbags for a really long time and I have had a passion for handbags for a long time but is it a passion or is it consumerism you notice my shelves are empty my bags are not gone I have come to the realization why do I have so many <laughs> Have I bought into consumerism? Have I been part of the problem? Yes, I have been part of the problem. I can admit to that. My husband, he loves shoes and specific Adidas shoes and he has a lot of them. Also, part of the problem. Have you been told for so long that you needed this, you need that, or you're nothing if you don't have this, for instance? If you don't have a multicolor piece, vintage or new, who are you? Can you afford them? Or is it because of all the, the pressure that maybe some YouTubers or you saw something, you're like, I like it, I want it. It's not needs, it's wants. Is it a passion or is it consumerism? As the prices increase on luxury brands like Chanel, Hermes, uh, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, I mean all of them. Is the quality still there even though they have upped the prices dramatically? Are you getting the same materials, the same quality of bag that you got 10, 15, 20 years ago? I'm asking you. I have heard from other YouTubers that the quality is not the same as it was back then and people are still buying Louis Vuittons they're still buying Fendi they're still buying them is the quality an issue and are youtubers and other influencers being honest about the quality do you feel like maybe there's been a lot of returns of certain high dollar bags because of the quality issues just questions to think about. As me and my husband were talking, and we always talk about everything and anything, even luxury and bags and you name it, we will talk about it. So my daughter just turned 11 and her generation and slightly older have not been into labels, not been into logos. Um, my daughter likes to wear my old shirts from the 80s and 90s. She likes she doesn't care if it's a Louis Vuitton, if it's a Fendi, she, don't, she doesn't care. And she likes to thrift. Now, let's say 10, 15, 20 years ago, were you thrifting at all? Did you consider it like low class or who thrifts? I mean, I have found some amazing, amazing bags and accessories at thrift stores that I have made money on and some of them I have kept because I couldn't believe the quality and the price that I paid and I'm giving it new life and I feel like the younger generations 
probably understand it more than my generation. I mean, are you feeling the same way? Have you seen more people thrifting? And it, at least where I am, and I'm in Missouri, I'm not going to tell you where, but I am in Missouri, and where I live, I don't think that I've seen more people at a retail store versus the thrift stores. Have you seen the change over the years? And I'm not political, this is, have you seen the change? I've seen more people at a thrift store than a coach retail store. I am not near Fendi, Louis Vuitton, none of those. They have to be shipped to me if I buy them. And I don't know if you've noticed, I have slowed. I wanted to challenge myself on a no buy because I got caught up with YouTube and consumerism and all of it. If you be honest with yourself and you look back years ago to now, since the dreaded COVID, did you ramp up your buying? The answer for me is yes. So the no buy was important to see if I could actually use what I got instead of spending countless dollars on something that I may or may not like. I have been reevaluating my collection because it is a big collection. And when you have a YouTube channel, it's the name of the game. You know, I notice views on higher dollar bags than say a Timu bag or even a Dooney and Burke, you know. I know that consumerism is a big thing. And I also know I can't buy every expensive, expensive bag. It's reality. I enjoy thrifting, actually. I like buying these pieces that people donated and I'm reusing or I resell. It gives them another life. And I've realized that more and more each day I, again, you've, if you've watched me, you know I am a 80s baby, you know, or a se late 70s, 80s, 90s. I grew up in that era. Everyone around me had Calvin Klein shirts, guest jeans, high top Reeboks, Umbros. They have, in my opinion, been pushing logos on specifically my age and maybe older, you know, especially you need this to feel this way or you're nothing or you're is it a status symbol that we're reaching for or do I just love the bags well that multicolor bag I do I really since everybody has said it that's my age when Jessica Simpson came out with a multicolor Louis Vuitton everybody wanted one did everyone get one no are they a little more affordable on the secondhand market? Mm, hard to say. Some people think that a $30 handbag is a, is a normal price to pay for a bag. Some of us have spent thousands and I have myself thought, why do I think I need a logo on my bag to feel special, like status? I. I don't get it. I'm questioning myself. So I'm questioning you, but I'm also looking into me and learning who I am or who I want to be. So these are all questions I'm throwing out to you. Are you still fueled by logos? Like, hello, I, I'm i just as guilty of a logo than I, I pointing at myself, <laughs> but I do actually love this bag. <laughs> yes, I probably spent too much, but for me, I love this bag. But do I care if the C's are all over it or not? Would I buy it without the C's? Would you buy this bag without all the C's? Just a uh, food for thought. Do you actually love the brands and are loyal to brands? Or do you feel the pressure to buy the brands? to feel a certain way? Questions I've asked myself. <laughs> Do I use my luxury bags as much as my contemporary bags? And the answer is no. 
Why is that? Why did I buy them? Again, I'm just as guilty for consumerism as anybody. And I'll admit uh, to you. That's why I am talking about it. Because I don't think we talk about that as much as we should. Do you think that we're the Gen X and older and maybe some younger millennial? Are we the last generation to care about logos and labels? Because I can see a trend a whole lot different in the younger generation. Let me know what your neighborhood, what your kids, your grandkids, what do they care about most? Is it labels? Is it logos? I've loved Coach forever. I have C's on a lot of my bags, but then I also have some newer ones that have no C's on it, and I still love it. I saw on a vintage website a Chanel bag with C's all over it, with Chanel on the front. And I will try to find a picture so you can see what I see. And it, it looked like a life rescue uh, tube. And it had C's and Chanel all over it. And is a pink and white little round bag that looks like something you would throw off in the ocean as a life-saving device is a purse. Would you buy that purse if it didn't have Chanel on it? Because I know I wouldn't. And everybody has their own opinions, right? And that's what makes us all different. I would not get a Chanel bag that looked like some kind of buoy thing that you throw out off the Titanic to save someone. That's not me. Do you think that if this had no print of DBs on it that people would still buy this bag? Because a lot of us do like these multicolors, right? It has the logos all over it. All over it. And I still like this bag. I really do. Again, this is for conversation. I mean, if Gucci or let's say, let's say Coach came out with a, uh, the same bag as Chanel, that buoy, that picture, would you buy it? And how much would you pay? That's, that Chanel bag on a vintage site was $4,600. Let that sink in. What world do you pay that much for a bag that looks like a life-saving device? Like, Are we trained only to like logos? Are we logo crazy? You know, there was the quiet luxury that happened and I was totally like, no, I like logos. I want my logos, but why do I want them? I why? can admit that I've been part of the problem and I am reevaluating my bags and I will always love my handbags. I will always have handbags and more than probably I should. And that's okay to me. Uh, it's not okay for some. I would never pressure anyone or influence someone who can't afford a bag unless you get it on a credit card. I would never want to be someone's push to buy something that they cannot afford. A lot of my stuff is affordable, but who, who says that even my stuff is affordable to some? It is to me, but does it mean that it is for your neighbor? I don't know. I feel like the younger generations are opening some of our gener my generation and me, my eyes are opening to, have I been part of this problem? And the answer for me is I have been part of the problem. Can I fix it? Do I, what do I do? Buy less bags? You've seen me buy less bags and that's for a reason. I want to talk about handbags, but I also want to not buy every single bag that comes out from Coach because I can't afford them all and I don't need them all. So for me, I have really tried, I know I just did a Timu haul and those are a four, like, Timu is affordable, but who knows if it's it's going to be around for that long. I, I have no idea. <laughs> but I just feel like the people that are doing $20,000 Louis Vuitton hauls or Fendi hauls or some of the YouTubers have left that were hauling all those expensive bags. Where did they go? Why did they leave? Did they also think that they were part of a consumerism culture? Maybe. I don't know. 
I know that I want to still do YouTube. I will always, like I said, love handbags. And I'm not going to say I'm not ever going to buy a Gucci or Louis Vuitton again. Because I can't say that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to influence people to, or make people feel bad if you can't afford something. Because I would, I'm not the person to tell you to buy a $2,000, $3,000 bag. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Period. And I am a stay-at-home mom now that I want to be a stay-at-home mom. I want to make YouTube my, my work. I want to make reselling bags my work and that is what I do know for sure about how I'm going to go forward. I will thrift. I want to, you know, know if you all are looking for something specific, a brand or a bag, maybe I can thrift for you. I mean, I think that a lot of people don't know where to look and there's a lot of places where you can look. Your local consignment shop with Louis Vuittons and Gucci and all that, I have them around me. Pawn shops, uh, there's a pawn shop in the next city over. They also sell luxury goods. Do I want to spend the money? Do I not? Eh. I'm, I'm just going to say this. I don't ever want to influence you or make you feel bad if you don't have a purse. A purse holds your items and we all have different styles. We all have different budgets. So for me, I don't want to influence you to go broke for a bag. When I unbox or when I find a bag that I have, I love, just know I would never want you to buy something that you, one, don't know if you even like, two, you don't have the money. So anyway, these are all my questions. I want to hear your responses down below. This is who I am and you can take it or leave it. Subscribe, unsubscribe. This is who I am and I hope you subscribe. I really do. <laughs> I still have my goal of 2,000 subscribers. It's taken me, what, three and a half years. You know, some YouTubers get on here, show you all their Louis Vuittons they bought, and they'll get up to 10,000 subs in no time. So I want you to chew on that little factoid too. Now, not all of them are showing every single luxury bag known to man either. I'm not saying that. But it does feel sometimes that the regular person buying, let's say a 100 to $200 bag does not always get the views that these $3,000 bags get. Sorry, it's such a long video, but I do appreciate all of you for watching me and subscribing. And I, I can't say enough, this has, being on YouTube for me has opened my eyes to so many things and I have enjoyed learning and growing as a person every step of the way. I really think that YouTube has given me a voice and I want to use it the way I'm supposed to use it. That's what I will leave you with. Have a great day, night, whenever you watch it, if you watch this. And I will talk to you on the next video. Bye.